All right, today we're gonna to be looking at some troubleshooting on a gas furnace. I've tried to make a couple videos and I start out good. I start out doing the gas pressure checks and the inducer motor checks and, and everything. And I always hate how the video turns out. So I've never posted anything. So this may be a little bit late in the season. I'm hoping that a few people learn something from it. But what has happened here on my end of things is I have a coworker who thinks he can stump me by implementing a problem in a furnace. So I've let him put a couple problems in a furnace that we have in the shop and I'm gonna go troubleshoot. So it'll be a little less boring hopefully than what, uh, what I wanted to do in the beginning, but I think we can still learn something from it. So what I'm gonna use, uh, I've written on the board here behind me, I've got a generic sequence of operation. This is what I'm thinking about when I go out to a furnace uh, and we're going to start out on like an 80% furnace, just a single stage gas unit, nothing fancy, no modulating furnaces, no variable speed. It's a single stage gas valve with a PSC motor, I believe. So, but truth be told, he can bug any unit out there. It doesn't matter. When I go to a gas furnace, this is what I think of in my mind. And I start troubleshooting where I see a gap in this sequence. This is the important thing for a lot of young guys in the field a lot of young technicians to understand. If you know the sequence, then you may not pinpoint it exactly, but at least you know where to start troubleshooting with your meter, with your gauges, uh, what have you, okay? So uh, step one, thermostat's gonna call for heat. Step two, the inducer motor is gonna start to, uh, to turn on and start to pre-purge the heat exchanger, get rid of any unwanted gases. That will hopefully cause the pressure switch to close, which is step three. Once we pretty much go through the third step, then we're going to start the ignition sequence for a unit. A lot of the units out there have a hot surface igniter or a glow plug, as some people call them. Uh, you'll hear a click from the, from the control board and you'll start to see this orange glow in the burner assembly. So the ignition sequence is going to start. Uh, after a few seconds, whatever it takes to actually get that igniter up to the ignition temperature of uh, the gas, then the gas valve is going to open and allow the gas to flow across the igniter. That will in turn, of course, light the furnace. And very soon afterwards, within a couple seconds, we'll have to prove that the flame is there. All right. If we get a, a flame that's proven, then the furnace will stay, stay lit and go through and, and warm the heat exchanger. And then we'll turn the blower on. All right, the blower on a gas furnace is not like in an electric heat system. It doesn't come on instantly when you get that call for heat. Uh, gas, you have to let the heat exchanger build up heat for a minute before you blow that air inside through the ductwork. All right, so once the blower comes on, then uh, it's gonna stay you know, pumping out warm air into the house through the ductwork and it'll stay running as long as the thermostat wants the room to be heated. The last step in this process of turning it on is to turn it off, okay? And the thermostat will then satisfy, meaning it'll, it'll reach the temperature it wants and it'll cut off. And of course that cuts the inducer motor off, you know, the gas valve, or actually cuts the gas valve off, then the inducer motor will uh, shortly there, thereafter cut off. Um, but, but you get the whole uh, stage down side of the sequence. So, but this is basically the generic thought process that I have. If I find that step one happens, then step two, then step three, but I don't get to step four, then I, I start troubleshooting somewhere here. All right, there are a lot of boards that have diagnostic LEDs on them and they're great, but that board is, is looking at voltage coming in and out. And that's what we have to verify as technicians in my mind. So uh, let's go look at a unit um, and we're gonna see just if, just see if we can figure out the problem that's in that unit. So, and we'll use this to, to help guide us. So, and just so you know, I've got my tools out here. Nobody told me anything except that furnace number six in this case didn't work. So uh, I've got my basic stuff, 10 in one, a couple meters. I've got some manometer um, and some tubing to do some checks. And I've got my clipboard with the basic furnace checks that I'll do. Uh, when I go out to a uh, maintenance or even a trouble, you know, a trouble call. So uh, I'll try to throw that up on the board if you want to look at it or up on the screen. And let you see exactly the, the, the checks needed for a furnace. And uh, that's it. We're going to 
jump to it. This will be our furnace that we're going to use. It's an 80% single stage Goodman gas furnace and my coworker has bugged it. I'm going to use my knowledge of the sequence of operation and see if I can't figure out what the problem is with this unit if there is one. All right. So first things first, I'm going to turn on power and I assume it's plugged in. I hear everything clicking and my thermostat just uh, lit up so I know that uh, power's on and it's flashing a heat on every couple seconds so I know that uh, we're in a time delay. So I've got the temperature turned up. We'll make a call for heat and that's the first step. So while that's waiting, uh, I'm gonna take this cover off and that way we can see the internals uh, of this top area of the furnace and see if we can identify if there's a problem. So the thermostat has finally finished the time delay. It's made its call for heat. My inducer motor is turning. Um, I saw the gas valve here off, so I turned it on. Probably just for safety, they cut it off, but hopefully that's not the only issue. Call for heat. The inducer motor has started, so it's pre-purging the heat exchanger, and that should cause the pressure switch to close. Then step four is the igniter. I see my hot surface igniter down here starting to glow and get up to temperature. The next step is the gas valve should be energized, and it is and I don't hear anything. I heard a click from the gas valve, but I don't hear any flame happening. All right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna step down just a little bit. So let's watch this for a second. We've got our igniter, and we've got, basically we've got our, uh, our burners, our three burners here. All right? So there goes the igniter. We know that we're getting power to the igniter. And I thought I heard the flow of gas going into the heat exchanger. I hear the click. I hear like a little faint sound of, of, of flow, like airflow or gas flow in this case, but nothing's lighting. So let me, uh, I'm going to go ahead and valve the gas off and I'm going to check my outlet gas pressure. If I've got pressure coming in, then I'll have pressure coming out. This is a natural gas unit, so I should have about 3.2 to 3.5 inches of water column somewhere in that area. And that should be what the gas valve is feeding into the manifold here to go into the burner. So let me turn, let me get my manometer here. I got the, got the gas off. I'm going to go ahead and check the inlet gas pressure. All right, so I, so I do have gas pressure sitting on the inlet side of the gas valve. I've got my manometer here. I'm going to zero it. I zero mine, and I, then I attach it to whatever I'm checking. So we're going to turn the gas back on. So call for heat from the thermostat. Inducer motor's going. The pressure switch should close. The igniter's going to light. I've got the manometer right here. And we're going to watch, I've got it set on the number one pressure port here, P1, so our reading should be across the top here. Igniter's going to glow up to temperature. Or get up to temperature. I saw something come out, but the gas pressure wasn't that, that high. I heard it flowing though. So let me... I'm going to use my I'm going to use my 10 and 1 and see if I can't adjust up a little bit. Uh, it doesn't look like we have very much gas pressure coming out. So I turned the spring down, uh, adjusted the screw down inside the gas valve. I might have hit my limit on trying to start this furnace so let me start it back over all right we stopped the call for heat now I'm gonna start it back and let's see what our gas pressure does this time I adjusted probably two turns in and of course you would monitor this and you don't want to over overshoot the gas pressure
there goes the igniter so let's see if we get more than 0.06 inches of water column now oh there we go we got a low low flame so maybe this is a new gas valve Oh, she's starting to sound better. I'm going to set it for 3.3 inches. Just as a just as a stopping point here for for this. All right, so uh, let's say it was a new gas valve installed. If you were putting in a new gas valve and there was no pressure on that spring at all to open the gas valve, maybe that's when you would see something like this. But uh, for our purposes here, uh, my blower motor just kicked on just a second ago, so we've pretty much gone through the whole the whole sequence, and we would run until the thermostat cuts off. So uh, not very many times in the field have I seen uh, an existing furnace just all of a sudden not have any gas pressure. Um, usually if that happens you, don't, you never hear the, like if the gas valve is bad you'll never hear the click of it being energized um, you would have to replace the gas valve but if, I, if you replace the gas valve and there was nothing coming out then of course you need to hook up your manometer check the outlet pressure and the inlet pressure right you got to have it coming in to go out so you would need to adjust appropriately so we've got 3.3 inches uh, thereabouts on this furnace and uh, I'm going to run through the rest of the checks, make sure everything's good, and record everything. I'll show you the picture at the end. Um, fairly simple problem. Probably not a very common problem, but by knowing the sequence of operation, I know where to start troubleshooting because the next step didn't happen. I pulled the flame sensor wire off of the flame sensing rod and the furnace cut off. I try to do that check because that is exactly what's supposed to happen for the flame proving. If you hook up your red and black lead wrong as far as polarity is concerned on the microamp reading for the flame sensing then you'll just get a positive number instead of a negative all right but the number is the number that is the microamps so 2.4 2.5 that's good barely got the igniter amps at the end uh, but it was 0.4 or excuse me 0.54 you can only check the amps on the igniter and the hot surface igniter 
when it's working for those 10 seconds leading up to the gas valve coming on. So if I checked it right now, it'd be zero. So you have to check it while it's glowing, all right? The brass cover's back on the gas valve on the gas pressure adjustment. All right, so I've got the basic checks except for the blower motor. So I'm going to turn the unit off here just so I don't open the door switch and break that connection and cut the whole unit off, all right? And sometimes to get the blower motor uh, amperage and do some checks down here at the service side of this uh, furnace, we have to take that cover off and if we do, then the blower door switch or the interlock switch, depending on um, you know, what manufacturer you're looking at in their diagram, uh, will open that switch because the pressure from the door is taken off, so the switch is going to spring open. But uh, we need it running, and a lot of guys put tape there, and somebody has put, somebody has put duct tape here. And you can see that. I, I personally don't like it. It's just not my thing. So what I'll do is I'll turn the power off real quick and while I'm there, all right, and you have to take this back when you leave, okay, you never bypass a safety. I'll take the door switch out the way, okay? So I've made a, a, a little jumper. I only have one. That way, uh, if I'm missing it, I know to put it back, all right? So I make a little jumper. It's got two male connections on the end and I turn the unit on while I'm there and I'll go through my checks. So I can see that the operation of the furnace is right because the cover is of course gonna get in the way. But you have to make sure if you're a technician on the field, of course you don't wanna leave a safety covered up so that the unit operates while while it's in an unsafe condition, we'll say. So I make sure that I take that with me when I go. If you're in the habit of taping over door switches, I would suggest that you don't because if something were to happen and the door just falls off, then now this whole area, especially with the blower being a, a, a moving part, right, the wheel in there, then you can get in some issues there. But uh, please make sure that you do the checks make sure that you do them right and if you have to sometimes you have to improvise but make sure you put that furnace that unit that heat pump whatever it is you put it back in the proper order when you leave usually the last thing i'll do is i'll do a return and supply air temperature and that way the unit is running i get those last two checks and then i walk away and go back in the homeowner's house and turn the thermostat you know to a uh, off position or back to the temperature that they had it. So, uh, and by doing the pressure or the temperature checks last, that's everything is already in my tool bag. I've got all my parts up, the covers are back on, the unit is just running in its normal state. And that's the last thing I need to check and walk away with. So there goes my furnace. I'm gonna, I'm gonna simulate, I'm gonna go back uh, or simulate. I'm gonna go back down here and check the return again. Once the blower comes on, this is an ECM motor, so uh, pretty easy to check. I'm going to grab and check the amp draw on the motor, record that information as well, and then I'll pop up and get the supply air temperature, and we'll pretty much uh, we'll pretty much be done with it. I'll I'll turn the thermostat back off, take my jumper out, and we'll let it fire and walk away. Here's the blower.
All right, so the furnace is fired. I'm gonna grab the amp draw for the blower. This is an X13, so it's a little bit different than a PSC motor. Still the same principle. We get the amp draw. It's 1.93 amps. I try not to ever shut a furnace off using the high voltage. I would do something, uh, I would go turn the thermostat back off and let it shut down the ignition sequence or, or turn the gas valve off, kill the flame, and let the blower take the heat out of the, the furnace heat exchanger and let it cool down on its own. And then I'm gonna take this jumper out. So the last thing that I'll do is do the return and supply air temperatures and I'll have all the covers back in place, all the pressure switch, tubing, wire, you know, everything's gonna be back to normal. Covers are gonna be on and I'll walk away knowing the return and supply are the last things that I checked. The blower just stopped, so I'm gonna turn the power off. I'm gonna pull my jumper off, put that back in my pocket, reattach the door switch lead. Turn the power back on once we get that bottom panel on. I'll turn the heat back on, and like I said, I will do my return and supply temperatures last. If you're doing a maintenance, you walk up to the unit while it's running, and you walk away from it while it's running. If you're there for a repair, you walk away from it while it's running. Because I'm short, I'm going to use a cheat stick. So I got about 109 coming out. And she's running fine. So I would walk away. All this was was a simple gas pressure issue. And we resolved it. So until next time.